Welcome, everyone, to the Everything Show. I am your host, Matrix Lord Two and Two, and I'm a Chris. What's up, Chris? What's up, everybody? So I got to ask you, and I know I wouldn't get to talk about this. Uh, we saw a poster. We did a cast on it earlier, uh, where it was supposed to be Avengers: Infinity War, and I kind of got pissed when I saw it because it reminded me of Spider-Man: Homecoming, and Iron Man was like seventy percent of the poster. And yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy was like, say, you know, another big percentage. And the movie's called Avengers. And the Avengers are all the way in the back. Really small. In fact, Doctor Strange was not even Avenger and he's there, like whatever. Why did they make a poster like that? Was that real? I, I think it was. Uh, I think I know the one you're talking about. And the reason for it is that Robert Downey Jr. is going to be the main hero character in this movie. It, it, it jives with the rumor that it's going to be his section of the Avengers that really takes the front in this movie. Like they, they take front, they, they stand front and center in this movie. And then in the next one, it's Captain America's part of the Avengers oh. that have to go help them or something. I mean, oh. that's the rumor. They're all going to be in this movie, but the rumor is that that's how it, it it's kind of separate, you know? So Robert Downey Jr. being, you know, one of the larger characters, if not the largest character on the poster, it makes sense to a point. Um, I'm not really a big fan of that poster. If it's, if, if I'm thinking of the one that you're thinking of, I don't like when they just, just put too many things in a poster at once. Right. It works in some things, but it, it's not a bad poster. I just don't think it's, well, so, so in other words, some of the guardians of the galaxy. Home. So in other words, some of the guardians of the galaxy are with Iron Man. And some are all, with, all. I think all of the guardians are with Iron Man. I all, think all, the whole team is with Iron and Man. And Thor yeah. too. Yeah, because he's with them. And we're about the and the Hulk, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the Captain America's team, which is what Ant Man and yeah, Black Widow, Hawkeye, Hawkeye, their Winter Soldier. Okay, Captain Marvel, right? Probably. I I would think I, ha I have to think because okay, you gotta yeah. have some powerful 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 people on the top team yeah I w yeah i mean and i would have thought black panther would have been on cap's team but he is i'm pretty sure because he's on the post with army unless that's just the thing i don't know oh, i don't know Who, well i mean they're all gonna show up in the movie yeah. so i mean all right so what else what did you have to have i, I mean to like throw you off there but like um no, no, uh, it's fine. We got the first teaser trailer for Pacific Rim Uprising oh, I didn't even today. Know that. Oh. Um, it's very, it's a very good trailer. Um, it, it, it basically starts out with this robotic voice saying, you know, what is a Jaeger? And it goes through kind of saying what a Jaeger was. And I really like this idea because there's a line in the trailer where the robotic voice says, um, when the monsters attacked, we didn't wait for heroes to fall from the sky. We saved ourselves. And it, it talks about the Jaeger program. And then we get to see the new Jaegers, most of them, in the movie. Um, the main one is going to be called the Gypsy Avenger. And it's a upgraded version of the Gypsy Danger. It's, uh, the, the thing about a lot of the Jaegers in, the, in this movie is that they are much sleeker. And they weigh less than the original Jaegers that we saw in Pacific Rim. Mm -hmm. um, they have more weapons. They're more humanoid looking than, than the ones in Pacific Rim. Okay. Um, so the main one is the Gypsy Avenger and John Boyega is one of the pilots. He's in the trailer. He says like something like join the Jaeger uprising. Um, the other Jaeger, the other few Jaegers we saw, one of them was called the Saber Athena, which is a, uh, a it's like a red Jaeger. It's got two like katanas, very sleek looking, um, almost like a feminine design, almost. Um, the another one we saw, what, what was it? it? Was called the uh, Titan Redeemer, and the Bracer Phoenix as well. So, so they had that much got of a lot of cool. Yeah, they they showed a bunch of them. Yeah. Wow. Um, How we long also was the saw. Yeah. About I think it was thirty to fifty seconds. It, it was less than oh. a minute, I believe. Well, that's so big. Deal. Um. Yeah. Um. We also saw what the toys are going to look like the Jaeger toys. Now I was completely wrong because the, the, the 
company that's making them, I believe is called Tamashi Nation or Tamashi Nations. I think okay. they're part of Bandai and they're known for making like pretty high quality figures. Right. I thought these were going to be really expensive. I was wrong. They look really good. And the most expensive one so far has been a little bit over $30. Wow. So really not that bad for pretty cool looking figures. I have to say now we only saw the Jaegers. We haven't seen any Kaiju, right. um, but I think they're saving that for the first trailer. So, okay. Wow. Interesting stuff. It looks good, right? Yeah. Okay. We also got some uh, Kong news. There's a Kong encounter exhibit at Comic Con right oh. now, and they put out a tweet. I believe it was a tweet that said that there's some sort of secret message in the experience. Okay. And if you put the message online, there's going to be some sort of classified information is what they're Ooh. saying a lot of people think it has something to do with uh godzilla 2 yeah well, uh, so, let me ask you yeah. a question about that godzilla 2 was moved back no okay what is it there's no nothing about kong versus godzilla in jeopardy right that's that's, that's baloney right i know somebody left a comment I, I looked up everything on Godzilla vs. Kong. I saw nothing that said it was in, ja in danger. In fact, Adam Wingard just did an interview today about okay. the movie. So oh, I, I, doubt, I don't think it's – yeah, I don't think it's – I was getting worried about problems. that. All right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, usually, you know, we don't usually get a comment like that from that person, which, you know. Yeah. So I was like, Ooh. yeah, Wingard, did, he, he did a he did a con uh, he did an interview either yesterday or, or, or the day before – and and he was talking about the size difference between Godzilla and Kong and, and right. some of the stuff like that. So I, I don't think that there's an issue with the movie just yet. No. Okay. What else do we have? Anything else? Yes. There was a, some pretty interesting news about the, getting into DC stuff. Okay. Um, apparently Shazam might be the next movie that DC puts out after Aquaman. <sighs> like before Batman. And before the flash, I would assume so. Yes. I don't understand why this has got to be a thing. I mean, I, why why are we not getting the flash about that? I know that. Well, the flash is in trouble right now. I don't think they have a director, or they're having trouble getting a director. And <sighs> come on, really? You know, a, another thing too. You know, I I didn't want to rush into this, but I mean, this is a good time to bring it up. I think Matt Reeves got rid of Ben Affleck's script for the Batman. I heard that. That we heard that. That's Yes. Oh, he's bad, right? I don't know. He's pissed, I'm sure. I'm uh, sure I, he's not yeah, happy. I, I, about I would it. be. I mean, if you wrote a script yeah. yourself and somebody threw it out, I mean, I, that's Yeah. Yeah, I I don't I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think we're going to see a Batman movie until either late 2019 or 2020. What are the odds this universe is going to get rebooted? I don't think it's going to. Not not in the sense of that we're going to get you mean a, a soft Bat reboot maybe? Yeah. Like I mean Wonder I could Woman see that. is Wonder Woman is definitely she's fine. You know, yeah. She's fine. But like a different Batman, I could see that. I I, I, could, I could see, see that Ben Affleck like, just they'll just make yeah. a movie like he's that's Batman and that's it without even, you know, I I don't think you Ben know, Affleck honestly, is gonna be. Honestly, I could yeah. see them maybe doing a Batman Beyond type movie where he passes it to somebody else and that's their new actor that plays the part. Really? Um, because I don't think he, I don't think he's very happy with this role to be honest with you. I mean, I don't know for sure. We heard rumors that he wasn't, but he's been all over the place with things too. So I don't know. Yeah. You know, I, I, th I mean, I know people say no, but I think the DC cinematic expanding universe, whatever the hell you call it is in trouble in the sense that they don't know what they want to do. I mean, didn't they say, Oh, well, let's do a Nightwing movie. Let's do a Gotham Sirens movie. Let's do a Harley Quinn. They're just throwing names out. And and they want to see yeah. what people say about it. And then when people say this is great, then they're like, okay. And when people say they suck, then they don't do anything with it. Like, are they still doing the Cyborg movie? As of right now, yes. And the Flash movie they're still going to do. They're trying to, yeah. 
And the Aquaman movie's finished. Aquaman is supposed to come out December of next year. But is it finished? No, I think they're in production right now, though. And what about Zack Snyder's uh, thing about deleting the tweets with uh, Justice League? I mean, is it going to be a completely different movie from what we've seen the teasers of? No. No. Appar- apparently not, no. So why is he mad? Is he mad or is he not mad? Apparently he's not. The only thing he really did on Twitter was just removed some of the stuff, but I mean, he's not a part of the movie anymore, so it does make sense, you know? Okay, so that was not, he might not be, be He a might be going on to another project. You never know. Maybe that's why okay. he did it. All right. Do we got anything else? Um, I heard there were some yes. shots I, of uh, Tom Holland and Doctor Strange, you know, Benedict together, Cumberbatch together, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if you heard this news. This news came out about uh, like two or three hours ago. Am I going to like it? I don't think so. Fox has struck again. Oh, wait. I I heard. Yes. Tell me. Say it anyway. So a director at Fox, Noah Harley, or Harley, uh, he created Legion and Fargo, is making a Doctor Doom movie. Yeah. Okay. People don't know this, but I've said this maybe a few times in the 5,000 videos that I made. Dr. Doom is my favorite comic book villain. Okay. Like Spider-Man's my favorite hero. Dr. Doom is my favorite. Again, everybody listening? My favorite combo villain. If you looked on my wall, which people don't get to see that, I have Doctor Doom stuff everywhere besides Spider-Man stuff. If I see Doctor Doom stuff, I buy it, like because there's not as much of a chance for me to see that rather than Spider-Man. Okay, so that's the one character that I feel needs to be represented right. I have never been happy with anybody's portrayal of Doctor Doom in any cinematic film of Fantastic Four, okay? Not happy with any person that played Doctor Doom, okay? So, and again, I'm not being a jerk about it, but that character needs to be handled right. Now, as far as the comics go, I've been very critical that they've been handling him wrong. And Dr. Doom where is a seller of comics and he puts the comic in and sells. They have destroyed the character so much that he is the last place comic of Iron Man. And he shouldn't be Iron Man. So um, Dr. Doom is powerful enough to run the whole Secret Wars thing, yes. And to have his own, you know, series about him yes but as far as a movie goes this is where i think people just don't know what the f to do um if they do a doctor doctor doom movie that means that the fantastic four reboot would be rebooted again because if they're going to do it directly from the comic they're going to show that Reed Richards is in school with him. They're both competitive with each other. Dr. Doom miscalculates, and he basically destroys his face, right? I mean, if that's what they're going to do, right, Chris? If Yeah, if they're going by the comic book origin and the story, yeah. Um, however, they could always redo it. Without Reed and, Richards, and, which may make no yeah. sense, by the way. Yeah. Um, th- this is one of those things that's making me scratch my head where it, it, it's almost, it's, it's very similar to the Venom argument. It's like, you can't really have Venom without Spider-Man. And it's like, you can't really have Dr. Doom without the Fantastic Four. Um, well, he, he, this is my philosophy on it, which might be diff- different than you think. You could have a Dr. Doom movie after Dr. Doom's established Yes, yeah. In a few sequels, 
and then they they can bring him into the MCU as the biggest threat if it was the case. Yeah. And then you could have a Doctor Doom movie where it end where he's going to take on everybody. Now, that would work. But if you're going to do a movie where it's like the Fantastic Four reboot, but not, you mean to tell me that he, the Fantastic Four would not appear once he becomes in his armor? Like, they wouldn't appear at the end? Or they wouldn't like. Well, that's that's the thing. It's like, what what is this movie going to be about? Is it just going to be about him coming to power, or is it going to be about him fighting somebody? Or it, what the reason why this is is because there must be some clause in the contract that as long as Reed Richards, Benjamin J. Grimm, you know, Sue Storm and Johnny Storm appear. Even if they're not the Fantastic Four, that yeah. they could continue the license. So this may be a technicality to keep the franchise going where they don't want to put another Fantastic Four reboot out because it's going to keep failing because they're not ready. So they need to get ready, Chris. They need to just stop putting shit movies out. Just get – why can't they just get ready? I don't understand – why can't they just make a good Fantastic Four movie? Can't they spend top of the line money and get somebody to do it? Yes. Can't they? Um, my my thing is this though: what what they need to do is, and, and you know, maybe I'm wrong, but they need to get somebody to do it and then let them do it. Don't step in and be like, "Well, we don't like this. We don't like this," unless they're going way off the rails. But I mean, I, I honestly think that the only company that can do a good Fantastic Four movie would be if it was in the MCU. Because I don't the agree. MCU, I, I don't well, agree this, because this, of what they did with Spider-Man. Well, th- well, well but, but this, this is why I say whether or not we would like it is a different story. But as far as, we, as, far as we've seen, they've been able to take an, an idea like Ant-Man and make a really good movie out of it. They've taken Spider-Man and they've made a movie that most people like. With the Fantastic Four, I, I don't think that they would – because to me it seems like Fox is afraid to kind of be a little silly with it. And they're trying to make it too serious. And that was my problem with the most recent one is that it was so serious that it was like, am I watching the Fantastic Four or am I watching like a really serious drama? So I think what, what they need to do is they need to kind of take a lighthearted approach with it, not too light. But a lighthearted approach where it's it's kind of like a family movie, but it still has some good moments in it. That's why I, I did kind of like the original two Fantastic Four movies. They have problems. Yeah, but at problems, least that like they were them. lighthearted. Yeah. They, they, yeah. The first one was more lighthearted, and I got into it because I was like, it's not too serious, but it's a little goofy, but, you know, that's okay because it's the Fantastic Four. Right. But – that other one that they just did, it was like, I feel like I'm going to get depressed after watching this movie. Like, it's it's so, like, yeah. ultra serious. And I don't need the Fantastic Four to be ultra serious, you know? No. It's got to be lighthearted, but it can't be corny. Yeah. And and that's what they've been doing. They don't know how to do it where it's lighthearted and not corny. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. Why can't we get like a huge director to do this Fantastic Four movie with a great well, writer? I don't that, that, understand. That's why it's so hard now because they've tried it three times. Is there any fans like, that are directors that will, could do it? I mean, writers. Well, well, well that's the that, that's the problem. That's why I brought that up before. Yes, there are. But my thing is, how how much is Fox going to be like? You can't do this. You can't do this. You can't do this. You can't do this. You got to do it like this. They have a huge library of Fantastic Four villains. Oh, they yeah. have it all. That Marvel's dying for them. I know. So let them do the movie. What you know? What not for nothing? What I would do with Fox is, I would get the best people that they, for the role. I mean, I'm not just talking about name brand people. As long as they can act really good, it doesn't have to be yeah. like you know ridiculous. I would get the best writers. I would get the most ridiculous directors, and just go all out. Budget is 250 million more, and just. That's it. You know what? This is your final attempt. You put the kitchen sink in it. I mean, you really, you 
do this movie as if this is your last Fantastic Four attempt, but you go out with the bang. And if you fail, okay, but at least you got the best people for the role and the best writers and the best directors. I don't even care. You get J.J. Abrams or whoever, Garth Roberts, I don't know, anybody. You get good friggin' people, man. Really good. And I'd be happy. And I am very sad, very sad that I'm almost embarrassed that Marvel shit on Fantastic Four Comics and will not, because of Disney, put out a Fantastic Four comic. I'm embarrassed mm. because that's Marvel's first family. So I guess Marvel is not about family anymore because they shit on their family that put them on the map. So, I, again, they tried it with X-Men. I wasn't happy with it. They tried it with Deadpool. They tried it with Wolverine. Let's kill everybody off because screw Fox. And you know what? They want to bring Deadpool back because they lost a lot of money. And, you know, look, just I don't understand what the big deal is. Why can't you have your comic and then somebody else has the movies? Why are you going to lose money? You're losing money already with making stupid things. Put a Fantastic Four comic back out there. But, no, they won't do that. Because Disney stepped in, and I'm, I'm very, it's very unfortunate to me. It's very sad. Marvel's not true unless they have Fantastic Four in their stable. In the comics. It's not the same. Marvel Universe is not the same. You take a big part of the Marvel Universe out, it's not the same. It isn't. So, I mean, that's me. I don't know about you, Chris, but Fantastic Four. No, I agree. I, 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 I think that... Uh... I think the MCU would probably benefit from having the Fantastic Four back. And I'm not just talking about the MCU. I'm talking about the comics, too. All all together, yeah. Um, But, but, you know, specifically talking about the MCU, not only would it benefit from having, you know, the Fantastic Four there, but think about the villains that they would have access to. If if Marvel got it, King the Conqueror could be an Avengers 5. Absolutely. Um, Nemo to Samara could be in... And again, I, I see this is the thing that I never understood. I mean, to me, I want Captain America movies with, you know, Chris Evans. Sure. But I don't want the Avengers in it. I really don't. I want, like, his own movie, you know? Yeah. And I, yeah. Winter Soldier was fantastic. And yes, Civil War was, was good, but I think it would have ra- I would have rather had him his own movie. Um he could be feisting the Red Skull, which I would love a better chance at the Red Skull. Um, he could be fighting Namor and the Submariner. They could do some, maybe like a prequel or some flashback into the past that he's the reason that Namor didn't come to the surface for decades. And then now he comes, you know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. <clears throat> but I think um, that's what needs to be, you know. Anything else? So we'll save it for tomorrow. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's pretty much it for today. You know, Comic Con. Was it Star Wars so. stuff or no? Yeah, there there was a weird thing that happened. Well, actually, there's, there's two things. One of them is pretty cool news. The other one's kind of weird. Uh, the first one is um, there's an exclusive Luke and Ray figure at uh, Comic Con this year, and it's Luke from the end of Episode Seven. Okay. And Ray from the end of episode, I, I I think it's either Ray from the end of episode seven or Ray from episode eight, but the Luke figure is definitely from the end of episode seven. So old man Luke, um, very oh. cool looking figures, really cool. Okay. The other weird, the weird news is they revealed a new character today. Yeah. And um, it's it's apparently Finn or Poe's wingman. I think it's Poe's wingman, like his partner that he flies with, I guess, or, or as part of his squadron. And it's literally just exactly the same character from the episode seven who got killed, but it's like the same model. They just put a different name on it. Um, so, so you remember in episode seven, there was that alien X wing pilot who, uh, like he, he, he had the really rough voice. And I remember he was like, uh, Finn or, or Poe gave that order and he was like, Roger. It was that like alien that had kind of like the grayish skin, like really small mouth. And, like the, his face was kind of flat. Oh, um, 
Well, I'm sure there's there's some people who know. Next time you watch The Force Awakens, you'll probably know who I'm talking about. I just watched it the other day, too. (laughs) Yeah. That character got killed. That character got killed during that battle. Yeah. This new character is literally just the same character model with a different name. (sighs) And I don't really get it. I am just kind of like, okay. I see. He's a partner or something? Yeah, apparently, yeah. All right. More tomorrow. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Take care. Bye for now.